My son loved his family and his friends. He would not have hurt his family this way. It was the drugs that caused him to use a gun and a pain management doctor that pulled the trigger. When your baby's laying in the hospital saying, please, mom, let me die. Please, if you love me, you'll let me die. Because to come off this stuff is worse than death. Over the past 18 months, volunteers with the Pinellas Chapter of Narcotics, Overdose Prevention and Education, or NOPE, have spoken to more than 55,000 parents and students in more than 100 assemblies at 30 schools throughout Pinellas County. We caught up with the group at a recent new student orientation event at Palm Harbor University High School. Jesse and Dustin Leonard, two brothers, Dustin came home from work one day and found Jesse dead on the kitchen floor from a methadone overdose. Three weeks later, Dustin's dad came home to find Dustin dead on the floor from a methadone overdose. Can you even imagine two boys in one family dead? On stage with the speakers this day at Palm Harbor University High School were portraits of NOPE's silent task force high school students and young adults who have died from prescription drug overdose. On this day, those silent voices filled the room with a lesson of utmost importance. Landon died on May 7, 2010 in our home. I opened his door and I saw that he was sitting up in his bed with his head back, his eyes closed, TV on, and his cell phone open in his lap. Landlin likely died earlier that Friday morning, well before I knocked on his door. When we found him, there were no pills, alcohol, or pot in his room. But later, it was determined that he died of a prescription drug overdose, a combination of Xanax and Vicodin. Now, as I look out there, I see a few parents with attitudes that say, ah, this is not my problem. This isn't our problem. Our kids are great. Never going to happen you're probably the most vulnerable. Nearly every seat was filled at the morning's assembly. People were moved by what they heard about a real problem that occurs too close to home. My children, I have twin daughters, and they were in a private school in a fundamental school, so they've lived a very sheltered life. I think we're going to have, be having a big discussion, <laughs> a big discussion on drugs that we really, we've touched on it, but nothing really major. I learned the, the signs of it, the warning signs. I think that's really important that a lot of people don't understand and know what to look for and I'm probably one of those parents that would think that would never happen to my child. It's a story of tragic heartbreak repeated over and over again. Stories no volunteers are willing to share if it does some good in our community. When we present to the kids they'll come in shooting their spitballs and pulling yanking the girl's hair or whatever and uh, they'll all be talking and joking. Ten minutes into our presentation you can hear a pin drop. I wish someone would have told me, you know, the dangers of prescription drugs. I just didn't know. So if we can educate parents and inform students the dangers of, of taking a pill when someone comes up to you and says, take this pill or take two pills to avoid what ha happened to our family. If we can just make a, a, a difference with one child, with one person, that's worthwhile. Hello again, everyone. I'm Len Szynski, along with my co-host, Paul Melton, with the Pinellas County Department of Justice and Consumer Services. And welcome to part two of Fighting Back Against Prescription Drug Abuse. Joining us now in the studio is Lori Serra, co-founder of the Pinellas Chapter of NOPE. You may recall her as the mom in our story about Matthew Serra in part one of Fighting Back. She is joined by Jackie Griffin, who is the Vice President of Development for Operation PAR here locally. Also, she's Executive Director of the Live Free Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition here in Pinellas County. Welcome, ladies, to our program. And, and Paul, you know, we saw the package just, just uh, a moment ago, and the, the stories are so heartrending, and yet they're so necessary to help uh, stem the abuse of prescription drug medication. They are. One, one of the biggest concerns that we have in Pinellas County as a result of this problem is, is lack of knowledge about what's going on out in the community. Um, parents, oftentimes parents, other folks, they don't realize the extent of the problem. And for that, or, or as a coalition partner to cover that, um, Lori and her um, organization, NOPE um, gets out in our community and educates the public, educates the youth that are at risk. And Lori, if you would, can you tell us a little bit about how NOPE does that? 
NOPE IS A HUGE COMMUNITY EFFORT HERE IN PINELLAS COUNTY. IT'S NOT JUST PARENTS. IT'S NOT JUST EDUCATORS. WE HAVE um, PHYSICIANS. WE HAVE uh, PEOPLE THAT ARE INVOLVED IN THE MEDICAL COMMUNITY. Um, ALL OF US SCHOOL BOARD MEMBERS. ALL OF US WORKING TOGETHER BECAUSE WE REALIZE ONE OF THE MOST NECESSARY AND IMPORTANT WAYS OF, of CURBING WHAT'S GOING ON HERE RELATED TO PRESCRIPTION DRUGS IS EDUCATION. Um, WE GO INTO SCHOOLS, HIGH SCHOOLS AND MIDDLE SCHOOLS AND WE PRESENT ASSEMBLIES. Uh, WE'RE NOT WILLING TO GO IN AND SEE JUST 30 STUDENTS, NOT THAT THEY'RE NOT IMPORTANT, BUT WHEN WE GO IN, WE WANT TO BE ABLE TO PRESENT TO THE ENTIRE SCHOOL Certainly. BECAUSE WE KNOW IT'S a, a PROBLEM FOR EVERYONE. AND WHY IS THIS IMPORTANT FOR THE BOTH OF YOU, JACKIE? I KNOW YOU, THROUGH OPERATION PAR AND YOUR OTHER uh, COALITION, you SPEND A LOT OF TIME IN FRONT OF A LOT OF PEOPLE DELIVERING THESE VERY POIGNANT MESSAGES. HOW IMPORTANT IS IT that, THAT YOU ALL AND OTHER ORGANIZATIONS uh, LIKE YOURS GET OUT THERE AND TALK TO THE PUBLIC? Well, I think it's critical. Um, the best thing about Live Free in Pinellas County is Pinellas County, and it's our job to mobilize our community. Laura is on our key leader council for Live Free. We sit around as a group of key stakeholders and we strategize. We use good data coming from the Department of Justice and Consumer Services. We work hand in hand with the Sheriff's Office, Sergeant Zito, and all that he does with the Narcotics Division. It's connecting community to community. So it's definitely when you do demand reduction. In our world with education, it's the same thing. We're, there's a high demand for a big, big, big need for knowledge, and we connect those individuals with the um, information that they need. It's an honor to work with Lori and Mark every year to help plan the vigil in October to continue that effort and to make certain that parents students, law enforcement, hospitals, the Florida Poison Information Center is all connected to one another because that's what it takes to get the job done. And Paul, I've heard it said uh, so often that law enforcement can only do so much, the courts can only do so much, but it can't uh, be solved from the top down, it's got to be solved from the bottom up and, and these ladies are doing just that. And, and that's the, because the root of the problem is addiction and, and both of these groups and, and, and they're connected. I can't tell you how many other groups that they're connected to all share the data that Jackie pointed out. It all they all share the commitment to helping our community and to getting our community um, to become aware of that problem and to find out where to turn um, if their family member or somebody they know is addicted. It's a great way for uh, our community partners to work together to achieve uh, results. Uh, do you, what kind of feedback do you get from your audiences now? Are, are, is this new information to people or are you reminding people of something they already know or what kind of feedback do you get? Lori, what about you? Well, when you consider that nationally two out of three teenagers report that their parents have never talked to them about prescription drugs, we know that the note message is timely. Ideally, these conversations would be starting in the home. We believe when they're in fourth and fifth grade, before there's a problem. Certainly by middle school, and I call it to parents, we say talking out loud. You know, you see that article on TV, read that article in the newspaper, and instead of just thinking to myself, oh my goodness, how tragic, you talk out loud and let your kids hear about this. Begin these conversations. And then we turn it on the other side and uh, through Live Free um, groups within the high schools and SAD groups as well as NOPE, we're trying to educate our students so that they in turn will then go back and begin to educate their parents. Mm. Uh, it's got to be a two-way conversation because it's everybody. It's not and, just one group. And I guess it's not too early to start, Paul. I mean, that, that's a good question. How soon should you begin these dialogues? Jackie, how soon should, should you begin to have talks with your children about this? Um, if you marry and are planning children, you should start then with your spouse-to-be. Uh, every single time we have some situation in life, it's a teachable moment. And that's what good education does. It's continuing that conversation throughout the developmental spectrum. You have an idea of what type of goals you have. You sit there as a family and you talk about those goals. You digest every moment of life, as Lori said, in a very mindful manner with um, a lot of respect and a lot of resources wrapped around you. Live Free has clubs that are in the high school, but we also have clubs that are in the community. And we found that a lot of our community youth serving organizations, such as the Police Athletic League, mm -hmm. our St. James AME Church in Clearwater, 
just want our help to mobilize talking forums. So we sit after hours and we discuss, similar to the old front porch method, where you sit around and talked with your elders, and we'd learn from one another. Um, when does the conversation begin? As soon as possible. When does the conversation end? I don't think ever, because you have new conversations. Sure. Paul mentioned um, addiction at the core of the problem. The recovering community is also very important. Once we have individuals coming out of treatment, it's our job to embrace them and make certain that they're connected back to community so that you have good support. For the parents who have kids that have lost someone, you need to connect them to the grief counseling resources and make certain that they've got one another as well in the Noranon types of forums, et cetera. And, and, and Paul, I certainly do respect and admire the people that go out in the community yes. with this important message. And Lori, let me ask you this. Uh, I mean, most people, when they experience a tragedy, they, they put it somewhere inside their mind, inside their heart, but they kind of keep it hidden. And yet, you and your husband, we saw in the package, you relive this with every time you go out in front of an audience. And, and Jackie, I'm sure you know people that keep reliving this experience as well. How do, what does it do to your heart when you go through this time after time after time? It drains us. That's what it does. It drains us. But at the same time, we're so encouraged when we hear from students. We hear stories um, about them going back and sharing with their friends. We had a student last year who actually had been to a note presentation, remembered the signs of overdose, remembered our message about don't wait, call 911, and she saved her friend's life. The girl ended up in a coma for a few days, but she survived. And the physician said if that student had not picked up that phone and called 911, her friend probably would have passed away. So, That's you know, right. we believe in being proactive instead of reactive, planting those seeds, not only with the students, but with the parents in the community. The more we're all joining and talking about this together openly, not being afraid to have these conversations, that's when we're going to see things significantly change, and we're beginning to see that now. So, <coughs> yes, Jackie. I was just say the courage that you see with these parents just sparks more stories, and it sparks more cor courage. Um, being drained, you know, it's like uh, EMS. They're constantly on the front lines. It's the same situation when you're dealing empathetically from your soul. You know, you have the same type of trauma secondary trauma they call it and you have to mobilize them so that there's a backup crew so that's why Lori's vision and training others and having a deep bench as they put it mm -hmm. is so 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 very important so that not just one person does right. it but a multitude of people do it so it looks like public education is paying off here uh, Paul it, it's a combined effort not only on law enforcement and government but throughout the entire community it starts with the people yes it does all right well, once again, we'd like to thank our guests, uh, Lori Sarah, co-founder of the Pinellas Chapter of NOPE, and Jackie Griffin from Operation PAR and Live Free. Thanks also to my co-host, Paul Melton, for being with us. Well, coming up on part three of Fighting Back, we talk about legal substances that are causing lots of heartaches. But these aren't sold at the pharmacies. They're sold at gas stations and convenience stores throughout Pinellas County. We'll take a look at how Pinellas County is fighting back against synthetic drug abuse. Make sure you're with us. Thank you.